Hello everyone, my name is Emma and in today's video I'm going to share with you something very exciting and that is my list of the top 10 words of this decade. So English is a very interesting language. Why? Because it is always changing. We continuously get new words in English. So in this video, I am going to teach you about 10 different words, one for each decade. So I'm gonna teach you words that were popular in 2010, 2011, all the way to 2020. For each year, you're gonna see one word, and those words are important, popular, and continue to be used even today. Um, in order to create this list of my top 10 words of the decade, I did some research. I looked at a whole bunch of different dictionaries from Oxford to dictionary.com to um, you know Cambridge, just a whole bunch of different types of dictionaries. And that helped me to create my list. I also used my own personal experience with these words. I, I chose them based on words that I, I have heard a lot and continue to hear. So I am excited to share with you my list of my top 10 words of the decade. So the first word I want to talk about is used so commonly today, but back in 2010, it was actually a newer kind of word. It was just gaining popularity that year. So what word am I talking about? Well, in 2010, my choice of word of the year would be the word app. So what is an app? An app is a software program that you find on your computer or your phone operating system. Apps have become very popular. Uh, many of us use apps in our everyday life. It's hard to remember the past before apps, actually. So here is my example. I have many apps on my phone. Now, I know this word might exist in your language as well. Apps is one of those words that has become popular in many different languages. So if this is not a new word for you, that's okay. I want you to think about the pronunciation of this word. Do you pronounce it the same way as I do? So I'm pronouncing this as app, almost like an apple, app. Um, so this is the word for 2010. The next word is for 2011. This word also has to do with computers and just with technology in general. I have here a photo, or not a photo, I have here a drawing of a cloud. So usually when we're talking about nature, we're talking about clouds that look like this. But in 2011, this word cloud became popular and it meant something different. When we're talking about technology, the cloud is the online space where we do things. For example, we store data on a cloud. Um, so we do different things online and we refer to that online space as the cloud. So I upload my photos to the cloud. That means they're not on my computer. They're somewhere in, uh, you know, this uh, online space. So our first two words of the decade have to do with technology. Our next ones, not so much. Okay, so 2012, if you can remember that far or that long ago, what was a very popular word in 2012 that continues to be popular today? Well, I did some research and a really popular word of 2012 was the word hashtag. Um, so you might be familiar with this word. It's used a lot. I remember back in maybe 2012, 2013, my grandmother, who had never used the internet before, asked me to explain a hashtag to her. And that was really, really difficult, I remember. So what is a hashtag? Well, simply, it is this number symbol that's followed by a word or a phrase. Hashtags are used mainly on social media or on the internet. 
Um, Twitter is a place where you will see a lot of hashtags. Same with Instagram. So when you see this symbol and a word or a phrase, that's a hashtag. So let me give you an example of a very famous hashtag. Many women used the hashtag me too to discuss sexual harassment. Okay, so this next word is actually one of my favorite words of the decade. And that word is binge watch. So first let me explain what this word means and then I will tell you why it's my favorite word. When we binge watch something, it means we watch a lot of episodes of a TV series or maybe a Netflix series and we watch it all in the same day in one setting, or sorry, one sitting. So I'll give you an example. I was watching Game of Thrones and I love that show. So what did I do? Well, I binge watched it. I watched an episode of Game of Thrones and then once that episode finished, I watched another episode of Game of Thrones and then a third episode of Game of Thrones. So that's like three or four hours of time where I just sat and watched a lot of the same TV show. So that's what I mean by binge watch. So we watch a lot of episodes of a TV series or a streaming series in one sitting. Can you think of a show maybe that you have binge watched in the past? You can write it in the comments below. Uh, it will be interesting to see what shows people really like to binge watch. So why is this my favorite of probably the this decade list? Well, I have a little secret and that is I am a couch potato. So what do I mean by couch potato? Well, a couch potato is a person who likes to sit on the couch and watch a lot of TV. So this is my secret. I am a couch potato. I spend a lot of time watching Netflix and TV. So I spend a lot of time binge watching different TV series. Now, be very careful with the pronunciation of this word, um, especially the G here. It's a J sound. So it's not a hard G, it's a soft G. We say binge binge watch, okay? Um, and again, this is a verb. So you can say, I binge watched a lot of shows yesterday. What did you do this weekend? Oh, I just binge watched my favorite TV program. Okay, so that is the word for 2013. Let's see what the rest of the decade holds for us. Okay, so let's talk about 2014. So that was quite a while back. What word became popular in 2014? Well, that is the word salty. Now, I have included this word salty on this list because since 2014, at first I started to hear it a little bit, but now I hear this word a lot. So I think this word has actually become more popular over time. So what does it mean to be salty? Well, if you look at this face, I think that will help you to understand. Salty has a negative meaning. If you say someone is salty, it means that they are maybe angry or bitter or upset. They might be even a little rude because they are angry. So I'll give you an example. This is not a true example, but just imagine. My brother is salty. Why? because I forgot his birthday. So I could say my brother is angry. My brother is resentful. He's bitter. But a nice fun slang way to say this is my brother is salty. Um, so with this word, I would use it, um, I recommend people from maybe the younger generation to use it because I, it hasn't really caught on with people from you know, in their 50s or 60s. I haven't heard older people using this word yet, but I've heard this word used by people in their 20s, their teens, their 30s. So just be aware that it is slang, but it tends to be the younger generation that is using this word. Okay, this word 
the next word is for 2015. I have here a picture of a ghost. Um, so, you know, for holidays like Halloween or when we watch scary movies, we often think about ghosts. But there now is another meaning for the word ghost. Ghost can actually be a verb, so it can be an action. Um, what does ghost mean? Well, here's an example. My friend Chloe hasn't heard from her date in two weeks. She's tried to call him, she's sent him text messages, but there's no response. So what's happening? It's like he's disappeared. It's like he is a ghost. So we say he ghosted her. Um, so this verb I have put on this list because I think it represents a cultural phenomenon that is happening. There are situations where, you know, now there is a lot of online dating. And so because of online dating, sometimes you might hear stories of people ghosting each other. This is where they meet for a date and then one person just stops all communication. When all communication is stopped by one person for no reason, we call that ghosting. So again, ghost means to stop communication, um, but without giving someone a reason. So it's like they disappear and it's unexpected. Okay, so 2016. 2016 was a very strange year for a lot of reasons. Um, and so you might be surprised with my choice for the word of the year for 2016. My choice is the word surreal. Surreal is an older word actually, but it actually became very popular again in 2016. So why did people start using this word a lot during 2016? Well, the word surreal means strange or weird. If you remember what happened in 2016, that was a very important election year in the United States. So in 2016, there was an election and many people said that they felt like the world was very surreal or that um, it was a very surreal experience. So whether, you know, if you're an American and you're a Democrat or a Republican, for many people, 2016 was a, a different year and it felt very surreal. So now let's move forward to 2020. The coronavirus has happened. I don't know about you, but life has become very surreal. So this means it has become very strange, very weird, especially compared to before. So it's a synonym for strange or weird. And here's the example. Since the coronavirus hit, life is surreal. Okay, so that was 2016. That was a big year. What about 2017? Well, 2017, even 2016, but also 2017, many people started talking about fake news. I actually made a video about fake news that you can watch where I explain what it means and I go into many different examples of fake news. But why did I choose this word for 2017? Well, that was the year that we started using it a lot. Here's an example. There is a lot of fake news on Facebook. So what does it mean if it's fake news? What do I mean by fake news? Well, fake news is disinformation or lies that is being presented like it's the real news. So I made up my own fake news story um, back in 2017, I think, where I said that um, Kim Kardashian is actually Michael Jackson. So that was my fake news story of that year. It's not true, but I made my own story up. That's an example of fake news. So now let's look at 2018, 2019, and bum, 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 2020. Okay, so 2018. What happened in 2018? Well, I noticed many of my friends started talking about toxic people in their lives. 
and all the toxic people they wanted to remove from their lives. Some people were talking about their toxic bosses or their tox sorry, their toxic work environments. So this is why I chose this word for 2018. It became very popular then, and it is still very popular today. To toxic has different meanings. The meaning we are talking about in this sense is um, synonyms for the word negative or harmful. So toxic means negative or harmful. So if I say remove toxic people from your life, that means remove negative people from your life. My workplace is toxic. This means my workplace is a negative environment. Um, maybe I have a boss who's not very nice and who puts a lot of pressure on me. Or maybe there's a lot of different stresses at work. So many people now use the word toxic when they talk about the negative parts of their life, specifically people or environments. So now 2019. 2019, I chose the word influencer. So what is an influencer? Well, an influencer is, if you look over here, it ends in ER, usually in English. Many times words that end in ER are about people. So they describe a person. An influencer is a person with a large audience and they're able to usually convince their audience, um, you know, either by using a product or wearing a product, they're often able to convince their audience to buy products. Many times influencers are sponsored by different companies. Um, they might also convince their fans to live a certain lifestyle. Uh, and remember, the key word here is influence. If you influence someone, it means that you, you help them make a decision on something. Um, so here's an example. Instagram has many different influencers on it. You might see Kim Kardashian on it. Um, Selena Gomez is another example of an influencer. Um, there are many people who became famous on Instagram and they are considered influencers. So this is a popular word, especially with you know, people from the younger generation who really look up to influencers. Um, so it is commonly used nowadays. But if you think about it, this word did not really exist in the same way 10 years ago. So that brings me to the best part of this whole video. Now I'm going to tell you what I think the words of 2020 should be. Okay, so before I tell you what the year or what the word of 2020 is, I wanted to tell you about what I consider the runner up. The runner up is the second place word of 2020. In my opinion, I think this word should be Karen. So you may have heard the woman's name, Karen, it's a very popular English name, but nowadays it has a different meaning in addition to being somebody's name. If you call somebody a Karen, it can be an insult. So here's an example. You might hear someone say, oh, she is such a Karen, or that's a Karen thing to do. Um, you know, that you sound like a Karen to me. So the reason I've included this word is I have seen it used a lot. I've seen it in the news. I've seen it on social media. Um, it's becoming a very popular slang word. And it's actually a very controversial word. So what does it mean if you call somebody a Karen and you're talking about the slang meaning? Well, it's usually used to describe a woman who is middle-aged, so maybe in her 40s, 50s, or 60s, and usually it's a white woman, so the skin color is white. And this woman is very demanding, very angry, and very entitled. So for example, if um, somebody goes to a restaurant and 
they have a great meal, but they want to complain to a manager anyways, you might call that person a Karen. So this word, some people love. I hear many people using this and laughing and loving it. Other people don't like this word. They consider it offensive. So this means they think that it is not a nice word to use. So whatever your opinion, this word is becoming more popular. So that's why I included it in today's list. But that is the runner up. For the actual word of 2020, in my opinion, one of the most important words that is being used around the world and that is very specific to 2020 is the word social distancing. So let's first look at the pronunciation of this. CI in English actually has like a ch sound. So social, social distance or social distancing. What does it mean when we practice social distancing? Well, this is a noun. And what it means, is, it can also be a verb too. Um, what it means is that we keep our physical distance. So we don't go close to people, we stay far away. Why are people practicing social distancing? Because of the coronavirus. So the big news story of 2020 has been the coronavirus. It has changed how we live and what we do. And so now many people are socially distancing. So they are not coming close physically, they stay apart. So here is my example sentence. We social distance due to coronavirus. So that, my friends, is what I consider 2020's word of the year. I am very curious about your opinions. Maybe in your opinion, there should be a different word for 2020. Or maybe you disagree with some of the earlier words on my list. I would love to hear from you. So please write in the comments what your um, opinion is on what the word of the year should be. I would also like to invite you to check out www.ingvid.com. There you can actually do a quiz to practice all the words that you have seen today. All the words I went over for each decade. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have many different videos on all sorts of different English topics and language learning topics. Finally, you can check out my website at www.teacheremma.com. There you can find some free resources that can help you with your English journey. So thank you for watching and until next time, take care.